there. My name is Kelly Dell with Off the Beaded Path. Thanks so much for joining me for another new fun video where we're going to learn how to make some really quick and easy bracelets using Brazilian waxed cording. Now, this cording is super easy to work with and very inexpensive, so it's really, really nice gifts that you can make for the upcoming holiday season. Or, like, I just like to wear them and stack them and do, like, a whole bunch of different ones, and you can do that as well. So, it's really fun and quick, and you need very little supplies. All right. Now, I will tell you, this is not a new type of bracelet. This has been done many times in many different ways. These are just my versions of how to do these bracelets. So let's go ahead and see what you need to get started. Before I show you the supplies you need, I always get questions about my bead mats. So the bead mat that I'm working today is by um, Beads, Boards, Bags, and Jewels. You can find them on Etsy. This is Carol Guterman. Um, this is her sort a bead tray where it has the little cutouts. And she actually sent me this new one with this fun um, animal print pattern. And she sent me some swatches of all of her new fun animal print patterns she has. And I just love love these. I'm a dog person and I love it. Look at that. Oh my gosh. They're just so cute. So, um, if you want one of the boards, make sure to hit up Carol Guterman at beads, boards, bags, jewels, dot .com. So to get started today, you are going to need a ruler. You're going to need a lighter. Now, you can use any old lighter. This is my favorite to use. Um, if anybody steals my lighter, I know who has my lighter. Um, this is a newer lighter. I really like it because it, it's got this little extendable handle here. So it doesn't, uh, you still have control of the flame and it doesn't get super close to your fingers. So um, you'll need a lighter. The only other major thing you're going to need is some Brazilian wax cording. Now, I sell lots and lots of colors of this in my online store at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. And you can see for six yards, it's 75 cents. So, it's super inexpensive to make these little bracelets. So, for today's bracelet, I'm going to show you a couple of different versions. So, um, for one, I'm going to be using the terracotta color, and I'm going to be using this really pretty size 6 um, gold luster African sunset Toho seed bead. That's what I'm going to use with that one. Um, I'm going to show you another one. My friend Sandy actually made this one in a class Saturday, and I was like, oh my gosh, I have to show that. I'm going to use the Chestnut Brazilian Wax Cord with this um, yellow gold bronze AB Rondale that we have on our website. And I'm going to use the new um, Phases of the Moon Charms by Tierra Cast. And I'm going to use kind of this antique gold color. And so those are the actual only beads. These are the only beads I'm going to use today. Um, otherwise, it's just going to be the cording. So, I'm going to go ahead and open my packages and give you measurements on how to get started. The first bracelet that I'm going to make is going to be just cording. And so, for this one, I'm going to use the crimson and the evergreen in this bracelet. I wanted to do something kind of Christmassy. So, the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take a nice sharp pair of scissors and I'm going to cut two pieces of cording that are 10 inches long a piece. So... 10 inches and cut that. And then I'm going to do another one. This Brazilian wax cord is a very, very, very waxy cording. So when you get done, your hands are going to be super soft <laughs> and it'll be so nice. And if you press them together, they do stay together. So I'm going to take those two 10 inch pieces and I'm going to set those to the side. So just so you can see Let's see, for our 10 inches, um, that is what, right here, that is where we will be in a centimeter if you are doing the centimeters. So, I'm going to do that, and then I'm going to cut nine, nine pieces that are eight inches long. All right, so you can do one color, you can do two colors, three colors, as many colors of this as you want to. It is completely up to you. I am, well, I say nine. I think I'm just going to go ahead and do ten, and I'm going to do five of each color. So I'm going to do eight inches, 
and you can do nine, you can do however many, however little you want. I'm gonna go ahead and cut my cords. I'm gonna do five red and five green. I've got five red and five green pieces of cording. Remember, you can do however many or however few or whatever you wanna do, but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take all of my pieces of my eight inch cording and I am going to get one end of each of those cords and I'm just gonna put them together. So for me, I'm just grabbing one of each color because I just wanna kind of have them mixed around each other. And like I said, they're waxy, so the great thing is you can press them like this and they're gonna stay together. They're not gonna come apart. And one more green. All right, so this is what I have so far. Now, again, I'm gonna pinch these, kind of keep them closed, and then I'm gonna take one of my 10 inch pieces of cording, and I'm going to take it and start a knot. So I'm gonna X them, and then take one cording under and through my little loop here, so I have a little knot. Now I wanna try to do this close to the center of my cord. All right, so it looks something similar to this. And I'm gonna take and slide my cording around my bundle of cords here. And I'm gonna leave about a quarter of an inch. You can see here. And I'm gonna tie and pull this really tightly here around this little bundle. I'm just gonna kind of flip it and I'm gonna tie it again. And I can put one knot, I can put two knots, however much I want. I just want a good, nice knot there where that is. Now I'm going to hold these two 10 inch pieces with my bundle kind of out of the way. And I'm going to, if I need to take and trim any of this, I can trim it. Um, but I don't want to trim it super, super close because you'll see why here in just a minute. <clears throat> so I'm going to go ahead and get these little cords out of the way. And I'm going to pull this up. I'm going to go ahead and have something here. And this is where my lighter is going to come in. All right. Now, I don't want to stick it directly into the flame. All right. I don't want to catch it on fire. So I'm going to hold it here next to the flame. And you can see how that is melting all of my little pieces together. Now you can take then and you can tap it like with this lighter, I can take and I can tap this and you can see what it's done. It's melted all these little ends together. So now they are fused together. You could also take, if you didn't have a taller lighter like this, you could also take and tap it on like a roller or something like that. Um, so that when you get that, and see now when we pull this, it won't come off because our little um, melted part here is going to hold that in place so that it doesn't come apart. So now I'm going to just leave this the way it is, and I'm going to come to the other end here. Now, if you have a little tiny wrist, you are probably going to want to trim this to about six inches. All right, this is where you kind of have to play a little bit. Um, some people with little tiny wrist will have to trim it to six inches or five and a half inch. It's gonna be like this. It's gonna be an adjustable slider is what we're gonna make out of it. Something similar to this. So you have to make sure that you leave enough room that you can get it over your hand like this. But then once you pull it, you won't have strings that are super, super, super long. For me, um, I like to wear about a seven and a quarter bracelet, so I'm going to trim mine at seven inches. This first one, you'll just kind of have to play with for your measurements to see what you like the best because you are going to lose just a little bit of it because we are going to melt it just like we did on this end. So I have mine trimmed now to that seven inches that I want. And I'm going to take and kind of pinch my little ends together here. 
And I'm gonna make sure there's not a strand that's just way completely out of crazy whack here. And then I'm gonna take my other 10 inch piece of cording and I'm gonna start that knot again. And I'm gonna slide my little bundle of threads between and pull it tight. I'll flip it and then make another knot so that I have a nice tied bundle of my cords here. Now, I don't feel like I need to trim this much because it's already pretty good here. So I'm gonna take and remember, I don't put the flame, don't put the cording into the flame. I just put it here next to it. I just wanna melt it. I don't wanna catch it on fire, just melt it. And like I said, I'll take take it and kind of tap it up against the little barrel of my, my lighter. That's why I like this little bit of a longer lighter. And then those are fused together so that once I pull the little bundle up here, you can see that it's not gonna come off. So now this is your main part of the bracelet and this is what we will actually use to make our little slider part. Now, if you want, you can definitely use leave it like I have here um, with just, you know, like on this one, there's just one cording. This one's gonna have two cordings and you can see this one actually has three and I've just left them like they are here. But one thing that you can also do, and I've seen a lot of people do this, is they actually go ahead and twist the ends so that they twist together. Now to do this, you're gonna have to pay attention to the way that your cord twists. So with the way that my cords are twisted, I'm actually gonna have to twist these in opposite directions. So you can see now how that twist is getting tighter and how it's curling up. So if I hold them together like this and then let them go, you see what happens there? You see how it twisted together and that's gonna stay together. I don't have to worry about that coming out. So I'm gonna go ahead now and put a knot here in the end. Don't have my little awl right here, I'll have to get it. Now, once we're gonna put a knot in this like I have done here, and we're gonna cut it, and we're gonna hit it with the lighter. Now, if you find that you will need this shorter or longer, you can do that again at the end. Um, don't worry and stress right now that, you know, oh my gosh, is it too long, is it too short? Um, I always make mine longer than what I think I'm gonna need. If I wanted to, I could also take and I could put me um, some beads on here, a couple of beads so that way it's not just a plain string that's hanging out there. So again, I'm gonna show you that twist again here on the other side of the bracelet. So I grab a hold of each side and I twist it. Twist, 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 twist. And like I said, I'm twisting till I can feel it curling. And you're gonna feel it get tight and tight and tighter and tighter and tighter. If you'll hold them together and let them go, they will twist together, all right? So that one didn't twist as much. So all I have to do is just pull it back out. Twist, 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 twist. And I actually taught this in my class this past Saturday and uh, or here at my store. And um, the biggest issue in the store that people had was this step, getting it twisted. Um, so, you know, it's completely up to you. Like I said, they don't have to be twisted if you're not great at it. Um, that's fine, no worries, but it'll twist just like that. And now I'm gonna take and I'm gonna make another knot. Now, when I do the knot on this end, I wanna make sure that it's pretty much close to where I did on this end. So just take and kind of measure it out to where it's about the same there. And then I'm gonna trim it and I'm gonna hit it with my lighter again. Melt it down a little bit and kind of do that. 
so that now that end is done. I have one little piece that's kind of sticking out there that you can chop and get rid of that. So that now I know that all of this is secure and it's not gonna come apart. But now we have to make the slider for it, all right? And to me, that's the fun part. So we're gonna put this kind of in the shape of a bracelet. I'm not going to cross these two ends. I'm gonna keep these two ends sitting right here next to each other. I'm gonna cut a new piece of cording. Since my ends are red, I'm actually gonna cut my cording in the red. The ends are green, not red. Lord help me. Oh, since they're green, I'm gonna cut it in red. And I'm gonna cut 12 inches. Now, we do a little macrame end that is super easy. Very, very simple flat macrame stitch or weave. So I'm gonna take my one piece and I'm going to slide it under my two green pieces here, All right? And again, I'm not crossing them. I'm gonna keep them side by side. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to start a knot. So I'm just gonna take my ends, cross them, and pull this down. Okay. Now, don't pull this super tight. If you pull this super tight, you're not going to be able to pull and adjust this. You want to pull it till it's closely wrapped around each of your pieces. But like I said, not super, super tight. All right. Now, this is going to be the same no matter if you're left-handed or right-handed. I'm going to start on one side. So, I'm going to start on the left-hand side. And I'm going to make the letter C with this left hand cord and I'm laying over the top of my two green cords. So see, there's nothing on top of my red cord. I'm laying it on top of my two green cords. Now I'm gonna take the right hand cord and I'm gonna lay it over the C. I'm gonna go under the green, under both green, and then I'm gonna pull it through the open C here. And see what it done there? And so now I'm gonna slide it up and I'm gonna be gentle as I slide it. And again, I don't want it super tight. I want it nice up against my cording, but I don't wanna pull it so tight that everything kind of draws in because then I won't be able to slide it back and forth. Now, you'll notice that there's a little tiny hump right here, what I call a hump. And this lets me know that my next stitch that I do or my next weave needs to be on this side, the right side. So on the right side, I'm going to make the letter P. All right, I'm making that circle like a P would be. And that's the right hand cord. It's going to lay over the green. I'm going to take this left cord and I'm going to lay it over the P under the green, both sets of my green here, and then I'm gonna pull it through this P that I have. And I'm gonna make sure that they, both cordings stay there where they're supposed to on the green. And then I'm gonna pull this up. Now, if you have a macrame board, you can absolutely do this on a macrame board, but it's just as easy to do it like I'm showing you here, because then you're only gonna put a few of these stitches in. So I've got my little hump here. So I'm gonna take now and make that C again with the left hand cord. And the right hand cord goes over the C, under the green, and I pull through the loop here. And again, I pull it up, the hump is on this side now, so I know that this time I've gotta make that P with this right hand cord here. So I'm gonna take my left hand cord and I go over the P, under the green, and through the loop. And you can make this as long or as short as you want this. So I could stop right now, but I'm gonna make it a little bit longer. So I'm gonna take the left-hand cord and I'm gonna make that C shape. 
Then the right hand cord is gonna go over the C, under the green, and then I'm gonna pull it through the loop. All right, I think I'm gonna do two more. So a P, I take the left cord, I go over the P, under the green, and then I pull it through the loop. And one last stitch, so I'm gonna make the C. I go over the C, under the green, and then I pull it through my loop. So that now this is what you've got. So now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to trim the ends and I'm gonna leave a little under a quarter of an inch here on each of these little ends. I'm gonna use my lighter and I'm going to melt this all the way to where it'll be up against the weave or the stitch that I just did. And then I'm gonna take my thing and kind of press it up against it so it's melted to the red cording that's still in place. So this won't come apart. Okay, and again, I'm just holding it close I don't want it to catch on fire. But now my ends look like this. And when I pull these, now I have that adjustable knot. And I have a simple cord bracelet that is gonna be so cute for the holiday season. Now, if you wanted to, you could take all of your cords, each and every one of them, and you could add seed beads to them like I've done here. So on this one, I used a size six seed bead and I just put about 35 or 40 beads on each strand and then I finished off the ends the exact same way, all right? I just did not put any knots or anything because I wanted these seed beads to move and I wanted to see the cording. So you can definitely put seed beads or any other type of bead. Sixes are really easy. Um, I also have done size eights and they're really nice on these. So completely up to you on how you use this cording to either make a plain cord bracelet or one like this. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to do something really simple. If we wanna put a little knot in between each of our beads to give this a little bit of a different look with the cord. So for this one, I am using the terracotta cording and again, that African sunset in a size six seed bead. And I've cut a meter or a yard of my cord and the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread on two of my size six seed beads. And then here, close to the end, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna put a knot. Now, I think I'm gonna go under twice to make a, you know, a good size knot and I'm gonna check it by taking my size six seed bead and trying to push that up and you can see that it's not going off so it's gonna work out good. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take and trim the end and then melt the little end down just like I did earlier. This just helps things to not, to not uh, unravel and look bad. So, got that done on one end. Now I'm going to measure out about three inches, okay? And then right at that little three inch mark, I'm gonna make another knot.
Now I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna pull one of these eights down. I'm gonna make sure that that eight doesn't go over it or six and it doesn't. So I'm, I'm gonna be fine here on this end. If you're worried, you can go ahead and you can put another knot in here and you can pull those knots together to kind of make a little bit of a larger size knot. Completely up to you. Doesn't have to be done that way. Now this is where if you have a tulip awl, it's gonna come in really, really, really handy. If you don't have a tulip awl, you can also use a pair of round nose pliers. And I'm gonna show you both ones so you'll know how to use it. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna thread on one size six seed bead. Now remember, on this one, we're doing something similar to this. So I've got the bead on here. I pull it all the way down to the knot, and then I'm going to make another knot. Now, if you have your tulip all, you can put your knot, your all inside of that knot, and I lay it down and I pull. Now, just like if we're going to use our round nose pliers, you'll notice that our awl is wider here and gets thinner as it goes to the end. So I kind of want to pull it close to the end here and then pull the knot here near the end. Now, once I slide the awl out, I'm going to lay my awl right at that knot and pull so that the knot goes right up against the bead. All right, I'm gonna show it to you one, one more time here using this size six seed bead. And I'm gonna zoom in a little bit. So when I put the knot in here, I put the awl into the knot, hold it, and then pull it. And you can see, you can even use your finger to kind of push it up against the awl. So when I slide it out, I'm gonna hold the awl here in place, and then I'm gonna pull the thread so that the awl pushes that knot up against the bead. So it helps it to get really nice and tight up against that bead. Now, if you, like I said, if you don't have an awl, you can also use like a, a stiff pin, like a, a sewing pin, or we're gonna use a pair of round nose pliers this time. So I'm gonna start the knot. I'm gonna take my round nose pliers and I'm gonna put those in place. And I'm gonna pull. And now, once I take the pliers out, I'm gonna hold it. Now I'm not holding it tight, all right? I'm just holding it close. And then I'm gonna pull the thread so that it will push the knot up Oops, there we go. It will push the knot up against those beads as well. So let me do that again for you real quick. So I put the bead on, pull it down, make a knot, put my round nose pliers back in, and use the barrel to pull the knot down. And then you can take and hold this and kind of pull it tight. So that way it pulls your knot up against your bead. Now you will continue to make a little knot in between each bead until you've done about your five and a half to your seven inches of beadwork, depending on the size you want for your bracelet. So I'm gonna continue on until I get my length. So I have all of my beads put on here that I want on here. And I've actually done about six and almost six and a half inches of the beadwork. Now, I need to finish the other end just like I did this one. So, I've got a knot after my last bead. And then I'm going to thread on two more beads. Now, these are just going to move. I'm not going to have any knot, you know, in between these. These are just going to move back and forth. And then I need to make a knot at that three-inch point again. So I'm gonna take and I'm gonna double it through. I'm gonna kind of measure it out to that. Whoops, that's longer than three. <laughs> Let's see. 
come in just a little with a knot. Okay, because I'm going to end up cutting that big knot off that I made here on the end. So let me just get these two together. There we go. All right. Now I'm going to go ahead and trim. And then let me find my lighter. And now I have both ends done on this bracelet. Now we're ready to do that um, macrame again. So I make sure that my two little beads that are going to be sliders, I'm going to put them on one end and then make sure the others are here on this end. And then I'm going to cut myself a new piece of cording. Now, it may be that you have enough cording left over to um, do the macrame, and I think I do. It's a little bit shorter, but that's okay. So, I'm going to take my new piece of cord, and I'm going to come under both of these pieces of cord that I already have in place, and I'm going to start the knot. Now this one, I'm going to pull it a little bit tighter just because if I don't, the knot will slide. These will slide really easy and um, it'll come off or not come off, but it'll loosen up and you don't really want that as you're wearing it. So I'm going to pull this one a little bit tighter. I'm going to start on the right hand side and I'm going to make that P shape. All right. Then the left side goes over the P under the two middle cords and then I pull it through the loop that I have there. And again, when I come up here and I pull, I wanna pull it a little bit tighter than I did on that last one. Just because there's only two little strands here to hold into place. So now I'm gonna make the C with the left cord. The right cord goes over the C, under the middle cords, and then I pull it through that little loop. Make the P. With the left cord, I go over the P, under the middle cords, and pull it through the loops. Make the C. Over the middle cord, or over the C, under the middle cords, and through the loop. Make my P over, under, and pull through the loop. And I think I'm just gonna do two more little macrame pieces here. So over, under, and pull through the loop. Oh, and then one more. Over under and through the loop. I'm going to go ahead and trim. So one and two. And then I'm going to melt this side. And do the same thing on this side. like that so that now that braid is nice and tight now if I need to make these shorter at this point I can come back and I can make these shorter or if I notice that one is way off from another I can make it a little bit shorter and to do that I'm just gonna make another knot kind of decide here where those need to be do another one. And 
There we go. So don't stress if your cords come out longer because like I said, you can take, just like I did on this one, and shorten them up. Okay, so that now, when you pull those out, you'll see that I have my little beads here on each end. So that way, it just gives it, instead of just being a simple knotted bracelet, it gives you a little thing here on the end. So for the last sample, I'm gonna be using the chestnut colored cord, and I've cut another meter or yard, whichever one you go by, and um, I've got it laid out ready to go. And then you see I have my little rondelles that I showed you earlier, and I have my little moon phases charm. So these are from Tierra Cast, they're super cute. You get five of these in a pack. Um, this whole little set. So they work out really, really, really nicely when you're doing a fun bracelet or whatever you want to do. Now, I'm going to do this one differently. I'm going to start in the center of my cord. So I'm going to thread on and sometimes you might have to do this and be real easy with it, but I put on a rondelle. I'm going to start in the middle. So I'm going to put on the full moon and then another rondelle. Now remember, I want this one close to the center, so I'm gonna take and put both ends together, and then I'm gonna pull this till it's down approximately to the middle of my bracelet. Now I'm gonna go ahead and on this side, I'm gonna put a knot, and not really worried about this side yet, so I've got it on there. And now this side, I'm gonna put a knot. And I'm gonna slide it up to the rondelles. All right, so the first charm is in place. The next one is a rondelle, a half moon, and a rondelle. Pull it all the way down, just like this. And now I'm gonna put another knot. Now I'm gonna go ahead and do, when I, as I do one side, I'm gonna do the other side as well. I'm not gonna be um, doing, you know, as I go all the way down. I'm gonna do one side and then go ahead and get the other side into place as I'm putting these charms. So now I'm gonna go back over to this beginner side here, put in a rondelle, a half moon, and a rondelle. And I'm gonna pull this down. And make a knot. And I'm going to continue to put on my little charms and my little rondelles until I get the length that I want for my bracelet. So you can see here that I did all of my beadwork. I got a little bit too uh, not happy and made it longer than I normally would. So you can see that I just did a very, very short clasp or slide knot on this one. So that way I wouldn't have to worry too much about the sizing on that one. And then I just put two of my little rondelles on each end there for this bracelet. So as you can see, this Brazilian wax cord really can make lots of of fun bracelets. Um, on this one, this was a large hole melon bead. And so I just used three cords and I did it exactly like I did here uh, because I needed bigger knots in between those. And you can see that I used multiple colors. So there's no right or wrong as to your colors or what you do with them. They're just a lot of fun to work with.
So guys, I hope you enjoyed learning how to make these super easy waxed Brazilian cord bracelets today. I've got all the materials that I showed on the video today on my website at offthebeadedpathbeadstore.com. And I know I'm going to get some questions. So the earrings that I have on, um, I actually did during our bead therapy sessions during 2020. And these are in my bead therapy ebook that you can find on my website. The necklace I have on today is just this little paper clip chain cord that we have and um, all the bracelets I made using what we did today. So guys, I hope you'll join me next week for another fun project and I hope you have a great week. Bye-bye.